In the book of Lamentations, the prophet writes, Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. My friends, I feel joy this morning being here with you. I'm imagining all the places where you are, your living rooms and kitchens with your coffee or tea, some of you just around the corner here on the island and some of you all the way on the other side of the country. I'm thinking Niall and Sarah in Seattle get extra points because they had to get up two hours earlier to watch this broadcast. So wherever you are and whenever it, are, whenever it is that you tune in, I'm glad to be with you and I hope that you feel the presence of God with you in your space. As I'm sure you are aware by now, Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers issued the Safer at Home emergency health order this week. And so I want to tell you a little bit about um, who's here with me today. We have a very skeletal crew. There's me, and there's Sherry at the piano, and then Michael and Glenn back running our sound. And um, we're staying a good six feet apart from each other, being diligent about washing our hands, and um, being in and out of here as, as little as possible, really wanting to maintain that safety with each other, as I know you all are as at home as well. As we support each other and our healthcare workers and systems by staying home and keeping our physical distance, we are exercising lots of ways of being connected with each other in this new way. Um, a few of those I want to just say right now, and also all of these you can find on our church website, which is St. John's Madeline Island, so stjohnsmadelineisland.org. And under the news tab, you can find a letter from me that details out all of these ways that I'm about ready to tell you. So at 2 o'clock on Tuesdays, through Fridays, we're having open community office hours via Zoom, which has been a great opportunity for me to see you and for you to see each other. Uh, if you just wanna log on between two and three during the day to say hello and let me know how you're doing, I would love that. Also, Tuesdays through Fridays, if you're on Facebook, I'm doing a centering moment around 10 o'clock in the morning each day where I offer a prayer or a poem um, maybe a question for us to reflect on during a day, a moment of silence, and then a blessing for, to carry us through our day. And you don't have to be there at 10 o'clock. You can find it on my Facebook page at any time. We have Bible study on Fridays via Zoom, which is working great. And Penny Gill has started doing her Stories of the Heart Circle via Zoom as well. So again, I'm grateful for this technology and all of the ways you all are adapting to this new way of being in community together. Um, we also have our phone tree that Julie Stryker is putting together. And as always, I'm available to you for individual time. If you're here on the island, and you're a walker, we can, I've, I've gone walk six feet apart. They work great. I can also do a Zoom appointment with you or just talk on the phone. I love hearing from you. I'm missing seeing you in person, so please reach out to me. I've loved uh, hearing your voices over the last couple of weeks. So for now, as we enter into worship, I invite you to take a deep breath. Maybe put down what you might have in your hands and feel yourself supported by the chair or the couch, or if you're sitting on the floor. Breathe in. Feel the spirit of God fill your lungs. The spirit of love fill your heart. Open up fully into this moment as we enter into worship together.
Will you pray with me, please? Come, O Creator, O immensity of love, eternity of mystery. Come and be with us and beside us and over us. Be as warmth within us and fire us for caring. Be as strength beside us and shape our lives for healing. Bring your vision through us so that your love can be known on earth. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our guide, our teacher, our savior, our friend. Amen. I invite you to sing with me one verse of our opening hymn, Be Now My Vision. Um, and I'm going to say, the, I'll say the, the words to you to help jog your memory. It goes, Be now my vision, O God of my heart. Nothing surpasses the love you impart. You met my best thought by day or by night, waking or sleeping, your presence my light. So I invite any kids who might be watching to come close to the screen because I want to um, teach you or sing with you a little song that relates to the scripture that we're going to hear from the Hebrew Bible, sometimes what we call the Old Testament. So the, our story today comes from the prophet Ezekiel. And he, the story is of, of a vision that God gives Ezekiel. He's looking out at this valley of dry bones, and then through the breath of God, the bones come together one by one to, to, form, to form people again, to form a community. And I love this story because, especially right now, when we are so separate, like I bet you're feeling sad to be separate from your friends, and maybe you're getting to see them on Zoom, but, um, but I bet you're, you're missing being together or being with family maybe during this time where we're taking care of each other by being separate from each other. So I love this story and this little song because just as God knit our body together part by part, how the foot bone is connected to the leg bone, which we're going to sing in a minute, God knits us together into one body even when we're not physically together that God's love still holds us together in community until we can see each other again. So I'm going to sing this little song, and if you know it, you can sing with me, and you can kind of do the motions with me as well, and Sherry's going to help me out. Ezekiel cried down, dry bones, Ezekiel cried down, dry bones, Ezekiel cried down. Dry bones, oh, hear the word of the Lord. The toe bone's connected to the heel bone. The heel bone's connected to the foot bone. The foot bone's connected to the leg bone. The leg bone's connected to the knee bone. The knee bone's connected to the thigh bone. The thigh bone's connected to the back bone. The back bone's connected to the neck bone. The neck bone's connected to the head bone oh hear the word of the lord so whenever you're feeling disconnected from your friends i invite you to sing that little song and remember how we are all connected in the love of god even when we can't physically be together amen thank you sherry for helping me so like i said our reading today is from the prophet Ezekiel. And today I'm actually going to introduce you to two prophets, one ancient and one contemporary. But we'll start with this reading from Ezekiel. This is from chapter 37. And this is Ezekiel speaking. The hand of the Lord came upon me 
and brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. God led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. God said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh God, only you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I, Ezekiel, I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone upon bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then God said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied, and as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood at their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, God said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up. Our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil, and you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me, please? Holy One, the psalmist writes that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Thank you for these words today. May they be a lamp for us, lighting our way through this challenging time. We know that you are a still speaking God, so please speak to us the word we need to hear from you today. Amen. So the story from Ezekiel, also in our lectionary reading for today, again, perfect for this season we happen to find ourselves in, the story was written uh, around 590 BCE right in the middle of the Babylonian exile. And you probably remember, we've talked about the Babylonian exile before, that the people of Israel had been living in Judah and um, had their, their temple in Jerusalem, and then they were conquered by the Babylonians. And their community was split apart, and many of them were taken out of the community to exile in Babylon, some were left, in the rubble of Judah, the temple was destroyed, the place where they um, had gone to worship God. And so the people's lives had been upended dramatically, um, exiled from the life they knew, uprooted, separated from the people that they loved, not able to go to the place where they had worshiped. Uh, businesses were lost to them, and those who had, were laborers were separated from their jobs. So unsure what would happen in a, in a situation of utter calamity and despair. Um, this is our lectionary text for today. And again, somewhat relevant to where we find ourselves in our situation. And into that space, into that space, in the middle of the years of the Babylonian exile, Ezekiel was a prophet who had been exiled to Babylon. In the middle of that, God reveals this vision to Ezekiel. He takes him up to the top of a mountain, and he looks, he has Ezekiel look out into this valley of dry bones, a metaphorical representation of what I'm sure Ezekiel and all the Israelites were feeling and facing, both literal illness and death, and also a sense of disconnection and loss and grief 
and despair for miles and miles and miles as far as the eye could see. And so God asks God asked Ezekiel, Ezekiel, can these bones live? And Ezekiel says, I'm, I'm guessing maybe a little exasperated, I, I don't know, God, you tell me, can these bones live? And so God says to Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones. And so Ezekiel does, and then slowly, bit by bit, one by one, one bone connecting to the next bone, joint by joint, sinew and flesh, they were put back together. But God says, you're not, you're not quite done yet because they need to have breath, so prophesy to the breath. And so Ezekiel did, and God's breath, the breath of the spirit, the breath of life, the breath coming from the four corners of the world flows into those bones and they begin to breathe, one skeleton at a time, one person at a time, and then the next and the next until the whole valley is filled with life that just a few minutes before was filled with dry bones without hope and now restored into teeming with life. This vision that God gives Ezekiel is not just about new life for individual people, but a restored and renewed community, the house of Israel, put back together in a totally new way. The, the community that emerged after the exile, because the people did emerge after the exile, that community was not the same as the one that had gone into exile. The Israelites would be forever changed by that experience. They emerge with a greater understanding of God's commitment to them and of their commitment to God and of what God does with and through community and what God requires of them to love God, to love each other, to care for each other and the alien among them. The people that emerged after exile were a people that returned with greater hope, greater resiliency, greater commitment to the covenant that they had with God before they entered the exile. Okay, let's pause there for a moment because I said I wanted to introduce you to a second prophet, a contemporary prophet. So the second reading I have for us today is from um, a poet named Lynn Unger. And Lynn Unger is a Unitarian Universalist minister um, and a poet. And I asked her permission to share this poem with you, and she said yes. And um, it's called Imagine. Imagine with me for a moment. Don't worry. I'm not saying it's real. Imagine, if you can, that there has been not a calamity, but a great awakening. Pretend, just for a moment, that we all so loved our threatened Earth that we stopped going on cruises, limited international flights, worked on cherishing the places where we already are. In this pretty fantasy, everyone who possibly can stops commuting, spends extra time with their kids or pets or garden. We have the revelation that everyone needs health care, sick leave, sit at steady work. It occurs to us that health workers are heroes, also teachers, not to mention the artists of all kinds who teach us resilience and joy. Imagine, if you will, that we turn to our neighbors in mutual aid, trading eggs for milk, checking in on those who are elderly or alone. Imagine that each of us felt suddenly called to wonder, in this moment, what does the world need from me? What are my gifts? Yes, I know, it's just a fantasy. The world could never change so radically overnight. But just imagine. This poem was written last week, also a vision of a community that emerges from a crisis different than before, more whole, more loving, more life-giving, a vision of belonging to each other, which of course we always have and we always do, a vision of honoring the sacredness of each person's work, a vision of deep 
and intimate care for the individual and the whole, a vision of a healed and healing planet. I call Lynn Unger a prophet because at essence what a prophet does is stand firmly within reality and points to the evidence of God's life among the people and among the world, especially pointing to signs of the life that God's bring in the midst of, of death, in the midst of what is despair. I'm guessing for Ezekiel's contemporaries, our first prophet, that when he left that mountaintop and began to share his vision, I'm imagining that some of the folks he shared it with thought he was crazy. They could not see a way out of their despair that they were in. And I'm guessing that some of us might hear this, this poem of the prophet, which to me sounds a little bit like how Jesus described the kingdom of God. We might hear that vision and think the same. That we look out at our valley of dry bones, miles upon miles, without an end in sight. And we could be forgiven for having moments of doubt or despair or thinking that God is nowhere to be found. And yet we have this book of scriptures, the Hebrew scriptures and the Christian scriptures, which are full of stories like the story we get from Ezekiel, full of how God is at work in the midst of the bleakest of times. In fact, one could sum up the whole narrative of scripture, the whole narrative arc of the Bible, in the sentence, God bringing new life out of the clutches of death. Beginning in Genesis, out of chaos, God brought creation. Out of the bondage of Egypt, God brought freedom. Out of the despair and destruction of exile, God brought a renewed and a renewing community of God's people. And of course, in our Christian scriptures, our Christian story, we have the story of Jesus, that on, from the death on the cross, God brings new life and a community that is here today, living and witnessing to the love of God active in the world. Over and over and over again, this is the story of God's people, witness to the breath and spirit of God alive and at work from the four corners of the world to renew and restore health and to transform us into new life. The same will be true in our time as well. We are looking out at the valley of dry bones, and that is really real. And we know that this is not the end of the story. God is doing a new thing as God always does and will bring us into a new and restored place. This is the nature of God. This is what God does. And, and, there is a role for us to play in this work of our God. We are invited to be part of this healing story. I don't know if you noticed, but in, um, in the Ezekiel story, when God asked Ezekiel whether the dry bones would live, and Ezekiel said, I don't know, God, you tell me. God doesn't really give Ezekiel an answer, but he gives him something to do. He says, prophesy to the bones. And so Ezekiel did. Ezekiel did, and he, and he prophesied to the bones, and he spoke to the new life that he was, he was envisioning for that valley of dry bones. And did you notice that in our poet, our contemporary prophet, after recounting her vision of a restored and renewed community, she stops and asks, imagine that each of us felt suddenly called to wonder, in this moment, what does the world need from me? What are my gifts? There is in these invitations from Ezekiel and our modern day prophet, wisdom for us about how to live in these days to look out and scan the horizon for any signs of life, any signs of God's spirit active and at work. And when we find those to speak to them and amplify them, even if it seems like a tiny thing in the midst of despair. And then also in the meantime, for us to ask ourselves, how can I bring my particular gifts into this space right now? And this, my friends, is what you all are so exceptional 
about doing and what I know you are doing every day. Those of you who pray are praying mightily without ceasing for the healing of the world. Those of you who are letter writers are amping it up, sending letter after letter to people near and far so that people know they are not alone. Those of you who organize and think systemically are putting those powers to good to help us rethink systems in all kinds of ways so that we can continue to care for each other in ways that are safe in our new environment. Those of you who are artists are, thank God, finding ways to share your art in this new world so that we can have resilience and joy and hope. Those of you who teach are offering wisdom and presence to students. Those of you who are agitators and are, and are advocating with our leaders to care for each other in whole and progressive ways. Those of you who have resources are discerning unbelievably creative ways to leverage those resources to get us through this time. No wonder the poet had such hope and vision because what is happening here in our St. John's or Madeline Island community is being replicated all over the world. Unbelievable acts of generosity and creativity, unbelievable amounts of solidarity for people and with people who we will never meet. Oh, my people, God says, I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. This is what God said to Ezekiel looking out at the valley of dry bones. And this is what God says to us. May it be so. Amen. As we come into our time of offering, I want to say again my deep gratitude for all of the ways, um, all of the ways you are so generous with uh, this community, with St. John's community and with the Madeline Island community. As I've said before, you can, we, we so appreciate even your regular offering. It helps us keep the lights on and our internet and pays our staff salaries. And so we're grateful for those of you who are continuing to give your regular offering in addition to the ways that you are continuing to be generous above and beyond that. Uh, on our website, again, stjohnsmadelineisland.org, there's on the, on the homepage, there's a brown button that says give. You can click that button and it'll take you to a page that invites you to give electronically, which is awesome, 
or has an address of where you can send the check. And I know many of you are dropping your checks off here at the office or in the lockbox in front, and that works too. So again, my deep gratitude and blessings to you as you continue to find ways to share your blessings with the world. As we enter into our time of um, prayers of the people, I offer this prayer um, adapted a little bit from one that was written by Nadia Boltz Weber. Um, and I will pray it and leave some space in between for the prayers of your own heart. And then as we close, I'll invite us into the Lord's Prayer together. I invite you to be in a spirit of prayer with me. Holy One, hear these prayers of your people. Our healers are exhausted, God. Please give rest to those who care for the sick. Our children are bored, God. Grant extra creativity to their caregivers. Our friends are lonely, God. Help us to reach out. Our loved ones are sick, God. Bring them your healing and your peace. Our workers are jobless, God. Grant us the collective will to care for them. Our parents are stressed, God. Bring play and joy and unexpected dance parties to those who need them. Our elders are isolated, God. Bring them comfort and strength. Our spirits are fragile, God. Bring us hope enough just for this day. Be thou our vision, God. Help us to hold on to your promise that you are always at work to do more than we could ever ask or imagine. And that within this valley of dry bones, your spirit is here, knitting us together, restored and renewed and transformed. And so offering these prayers and the prayers of our hearts, we hold on to your promises as we say together this prayer we learn from Jesus in whatever words are meaningful for you. Our creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So our closing hymn, we'll sing together um, what we often, almost always sing at the close of worship. Um, God be with us. And I'll read to you the, uh, the verse that we'll sing. God be with you till we meet again. By good counsel, God, uphold you. With a shepherd's care, enfold you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet. Till we meet, till we meet. God be with you till we meet again.
before I give you the final benediction, I want to say a word about next week. So next week is Palm Sunday and also the first Sunday of the month. So I invite you, if you are able and if you would like, to bring two things with you when you come to worship next Sunday. The first is something that could be sort of like a palm. If you actually have palms where you are, that's awesome. Grab one of those. But I invite you to grab a branch or a leaf or a flower. It could even be a feather, um, something. It would be great if it was living or had been living at some point, but something that represents a palm. I invite you to bring that. And then we're going to have communion together, even as we're apart. So I invite you to bring some kind of bread. It could be actual bread. It could be an Oreo, <laughs> whatever it is you want to bring. Um, and then some sort of juice. It could even be water so that, you, so that we can have uh, communion together even as we are apart. My friends, wherever you are, I hope you feel the spirit of God alive in your heart. And know that I am praying with you as I know you are praying with me. And that you may know the love of God, the peace of Christ, the power and presence of the Spirit with you today and always. Amen.